Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. And we'll be taking a look at uh, newspapers and the headlines in Nigeria today, beginning with the Daily Independent. Southern governors or senators back regional uh, governors on open grazing ban. Southern senators back regions governors on open grazing ban say agreed strategies will check kidnapping and killings secure region, return it a path of peace and development, and Ndeme fought Southern governors on open grazing ban. Above the headline on the Daily Independence, Idel Fitri, let's not fall prey to forces of division, Buhari advises. Without a warming, children risk physical, mental disabilities. That's according to experts. And we see here Neti EFCC ICPC NFRU to enforce transparency in extractive industry. Gunmen attack two Akwai bomb police stations and kill officer. Infants, two others die in Ogun gas explosion. National greed. CCN investigates total system collapse. And why Obasaki once current Edo PDP ex ESCO dissolved. Uh, below the headline on the Daily Independence, Lagos government vows to enforce COVID-19 pandemic rules. NDLA nabs Lagos politician with cocaine worth millions of Naira. Those are the stories on the Daily Independence. All right, now for the Nigerian Tribune uh, this morning, uh, Southern Senators reps back Southern Governors. We will work with National Assembly to achieve our goals. And that is um, from Akere Dolu. Don't be afraid of uh, consequence of your decision, says Afenifere. Governor's resolution informed by fragile state of the country, Pandef is saying. Also, Nigeria's diaspora remittance dropped by 28% in 2020. That is from the World Bank. A gas explosion kills three in Abelkota. Greed collapse plunges Nigerians into darkness. And also sea pirates kill two in raid of Akwai bomb waterways. We can also see in the Nigerian Tribune, famine may threaten 12.8 million Nigerians between June and August, says the FAO. Insecurity, police stop personnel from escorting political office holders and VIPs in Southeast and South South. Still on the Nigerian Tribune uh, this morning, just one or two other stories. About on Chief Imam, Sheikh Dahiru uh, Bauchi, Mark Ideo Fitri ahead uh, orders as Muslims worldwide celebrate Eid today. Those are the big stories on the Nigerian Tribune. On the Punch newspaper, the same headline we've been seeing throughout the newspapers this morning, Southern Governor's Resolutions. ACF backs open grazing ban, says restructuring to divide Nigeria. And the forum says some restructuring advocates want Nigeria disintegrated. Houses to get bills sued. Lawmakers seek legal backing for resolutions. With 2014 CONFAB report, no need for fresh dialogue, says Middle Belt. Above the headline, Nigeria diaspora remittances declined by 27.7% to $16.8 billion. That's according to the World Bank. The TCN here says total system collapse under probe, repairs progressing. Buhari Lawan, governors, others, Preach unity and love at Idel Fitri. Below the headline on the Punch newspaper, uh, we see here it says Lagos threatens to prosecute Hajj returnees over seven day compulsory isolation. Three burns to death as refrigerator gas explodes in Ogun. We will keep Babai Jesha until Jusun resumes, police tells protesters. Also on the Punch newspaper, Khan declares three day mourning prayers against terrorists, bandits, and kidnappers. Ex-Lagos LG boss arrested with cocaine at MMIA, 145 million naira seized. Terrorists in Southwest planning attacks on redemption camp, winners and mosque, and that's according to Akintoye. And now on the Daily Sun, terrorists have encircled the um, Southwest, Yoruba group alleges. Again, Catholic bishops warn of looming danger. Task Buhari a new approach to security challenges. NAS cautions against extrajudicial killings in Southeast and South South. Also, reps back Southern governors on open grazing ban and others. Why we took the decision, Akiri Dulu, uh, SNGF chair. Also, Uzadima sacks 20 commissioners and others in one fell swoop. 
Once again, blackout looms as national grid collapses. Gunmen kill policeman in Akwaibom, burn station. In Delfitri, Buhari governors Kalu others seek unity against criminals. And security forces arrest IPOB commander. NDLEA nabs Lagos drug baron, seizes cocaine, millions of naira. And uh, EFCC recovers $153 million from the Ziani, secures a for, uh, for feature of over 80 houses. These are the big ones on the Daily Sun newspapers. On the Nation newspaper, row over South Governor's call for restructuring and dialogue. India variants. Lagos puts U.S., Ghana, on others under watch. Police withdraw escorts from ministers, VIPs, South, South, Southeast affected. Can declares three-day prayer against insecurity. APC to screen 1,385 Lagos Council poll aspirants on Saturday. TCN confirms total power collapse. Three dead in Ogun gas explosion. NMA says AKT Ondo others owing doctors. Policemen killed in attacks on stations. And uh, the nation here wishing um, Eid Mubarak to its readers. Um, Ms. Nayeto, good morning. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. Have you? Good morning. Thanks for can being here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we, can. we can. All right. So there's... Yes. Good there's... morning. My network... All right. We apologize for the difficulty in connecting with us, but good to know that we have you now. And uh, we see that across the newspapers this morning, um, one factor repeating itself is the resolution that the southern governors reached, you know, at their meeting in Delta State. And um, several factions, you know, supporting, you know, the decisions they reached on banning open grazing. On the Daily Independence, it said the Southern Senators backs it. We see that um, that's the same story on the Daily Times. Um, North kicks, as I find very others, you know, back Southern governors and, and cattle grazing ban on the Guardian newspaper. It's the same on the Nation and on the Punch newspaper this morning. Mr. Yatok, are you still there? Very much there. I'm hearing you. I hope you're hearing me. Yes, as well. I can hear you. I'm saying that this story is repetitive today. The resolution of the Southern governors and how different factions are supporting this or kicking against it. Um, what do you think about the resolution to um, ban open grazing in the southern states of Nigeria? You know, I think that the time has come when we must no longer live under any illusions uh, of um, the fact that if we want to be a country, let's be a country. If we want to be a nation, let's be a nation. Um, and there are certain fundamentals that um, run through the thread of a sustainable nation. And one of those fundamental threads is equality of all citizens. And what's been going on has not been too fair, because if you look at it logically, it makes more sense for people to have ranches for their animals, for their cattle in particular. It's just, just commonsensical, because in terms of the economics, the, 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 the cattle are restricted, so they get fatter, so their productivity is higher. In terms of risk factor, our children, our sons, don't have to trek from Sokoto to Kalaba. It just doesn't make sense. In terms of the dynamics, all the fights that we have, the so-called um, herder farmers clash. I don't know what clash is. I have a farm, and people intrude on my farm, and you call it a clash. It doesn't make sense. So all these things can be stopped with just one action, just a single action. And what is that action? Ranching. So we've sat down and we've looked at this country, the way things are going. There are several conspiracy theories that abound. I was doing a write-up yesterday, and I did a lot of research. I did a lot of talking to people. And I was so, somewhere along the line, I just couldn't continue. Because the conspiracy theories are just, I'll put it down and I'll probably I'll publish it soon. We really need to come down and sit down and think. Now, I believe that there are two Fulanis. And the moment we realize this, everything will be settled. There's the Nigeria Fulani. We are all for them. They are nice. They are kind. They are, you know, we've always known them to be our megad because they are trustworthy. They are gentle. They don't take, you know, they don't look for anybody's problem. They are the Nigeria Fulanis. There are these people who feel that Nigeria should be their next home. 
These are fighters, these are militants, these people will take no prisoners, these people don't care, they are conscienceless. These are people that are just, they are, they are, they are, they are, I'm looking for the best word to use because it's difficult for me to find something that really uh, um, describes their horrifying nature. Now, these people are even marginalizing the Nigerian Fulanese because Nigerian Fulanese are quiet, they are docile, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are nice, and people are these other people take no prisoners. So, I have not seen my president draw that line. And he's the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Whoever takes that title takes a certain responsibility of neutrality and being for all and yet for none. So I think that the southern governors have sat down, they've realized what's going on, and they have taken far-reaching decisions. And you know what came to me as of yesterday in my research? The Middle Belt governors are starting to make calls. First, it was certain regions. You know, South South was there, South East was there. Then there was a, a, a bridge between the South South and the South East, and now the South West are coming. As at today, I can tell you authoritatively that North Central is starting to have dialogue with the Southern region. But this does not have to continue. I, I, I look for somebody to tell me any of the points that the Southern governors put forward that is unnationalistic. Let me use that term. All right. Let's also bring in, um, still on the same topic, uh, the comments by Professor Usman Yusuf. Uh, he, on another television station, complained that the southern governors didn't seek uh, um, advice or consent from Fulani leaders and Fulani elders, and also said that southern governors must provide land for headers in their states if, if they want to go through with uh, this ban on open grazing. Uh, what's your reaction to that? I, I, I listened to that interview, and um, coming from a professor, I was um, between you and I. <laughs> How can I say between you and I in public anyway? I was um, taken aback, not just a little, substantially, for two reasons. Number one is that Mr. Professor should have realized that this was a meeting of the Southwest, the Southeast, the South South, okay? And that one of the principal players, which is the Southwest, had held a meeting with the Metiala or the Fulani stock. So one would expect that when they were having this meeting, they would have reported back the meeting that they had with others. So for you to say that in this larger meeting, they should have been brought back exclusively to talk with them. Is he telling me, Mr. Professor, that the Southwest governors who had the meeting with these, with these our brothers did not have the capacity to comprehend the meeting and to recap in their meeting? That was absolutely unnecessary, as on the first take. Then in terms of land, you know, I always say this. I, I believe that we should learn to draw certain lines. The federal government is there to give a protective cover to all the weak and vulnerable um, segments of the society. So to that extent, if the Fulanis in the new dispensation need a certain cover, I will be one of those that will support that motion, not just physically or intellectually, but even financially if the need comes. But that will happen when I know that my brothers, and within this context, I'm talking of the Nigeria Fulanis, are disenfranchised. I will speak for them the way I spoke for our brothers in the Niger Delta when they could no longer fish because all their waterways and everything had become polluted. So to that extent, Mr. President still holds the ace. And that ace is for him to draw that line if I say this time and time again, if I was the governor of a Ibom state, you have Ibibios in Cross River, you have Ibibios in Abia, you have Ibibios in Rivers, you have Ibibios all around probably the southern part of Nigeria. I am not going to carry the budget of a Ibom state and empower people from Abia 
or people from rivers because they are dubious. No! Brother, brother, nice to see you, nice to have you, but you see, this is for Akwaibom State. This is Akwaibom budget. And I was elected by Akwaibom people and given a mandate, and I swore on oath for me to defend and protect and empower them. To that extent, the Fulanis are there in Mali, Niger, Chad, Cameroon, they are there all over. But the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria was not elected as the, the, the Oga, the Baba, the Obom of Fulanis worldwide. No, because in Akwaibom, you have Nakis worldwide, that Akwaibom students, National Association of Akwaibom students worldwide. So once you are an Akwaibom person in any way you are in the world, you are covered by them. The same way, you are not the president of Fulanis worldwide. You are the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and you've got to draw that line. And until that line is drawn, we will end up saying things derogatory against our people because we are doing right. a blanket cover. Okay. I am for the Fulanis of Nigeria extraction. All right. Let's quickly also speak about the uh, power grid, the uh, national grid collapse yesterday. Uh, there's been efforts to revive it and bring it back into uh, full operations. Uh, but, you know, um, I was saying earlier, it's a little disappointing, you know, that we're still experiencing things like this uh, here in Nigeria. They're seeing that we're struggling to meet up with 5,000 megawatts of electricity for our population. And at the same time, there's uh, people who suggest that this, you know, is a time that we should go back into discussing decentralizing power and letting states be able to generate their own power and regions also gener generate their own power. Um, but quickly share your thoughts on the collapse. <laughs> there will continue to be collapse when you think that an area that has so much sun and has no water should enjoy light from water instead of from the sun. It just doesn't make sense. It is uh, the day we start to run government based on fundamentals of good governance. That day, we will have a nation that thrives. But when you want to pipe oil from the south to the north, you want to bring power from the north to the south. When the south has water, the north has wind, the north has um, um, sun, and it's of allowing each region to harvest what is their greatest potentials and Together we bring in the mix and we are stronger together so that our individual you know, um, potentials and, and, and advantages are harnessed and like team, together everyone achieves more. Once we bring in that concept into our governance structure, Nigeria will just rise overnight as the giant, not just of Africa, because we are endowed with all we have. Go to the north, the minerals are there, but they are black closing their eyes to the minerals because we want to look at oil. One of my prayers, and I hope the SSS does not come to me for this, is that the oil in Nigeria should dry up. I'm from United Delta, and I say it with every sense of responsibility, so that we can wake up and start to think. Minus oil, we have everything. Look at agriculture. Just take mango in the south. After eating, throw it on the road. The next time you come, it's like, what is this nonsense? You have to come and cut the mango because it has grown. That's how beautiful. Whereas some other places, they need to do prayer meeting for the soil, for it to grow. We have everything that it takes. If I was, I've always said, I wish I was the governor of Benue State. One of the states I would like to be the governor of is Benue State. Because all I need is a strategic partnership with Israel on agriculture. And I will seize the whole of the West African sub-region. But land is a major resource that certain countries cannot afford to dream of. And you have so much land, and the complaint is that, oh, uh, forestry, all oh, the bandits have taken over all the forest. Why wouldn't they take over with the forest when nothing is happening to the forest? Look at Sambisa Forest. Why can't we take Sambisa Forest as a special project in Nigeria? Go into the sort of agriculture, let the federal government budget so much money just to turn Sambisa Forest into the hub that feeds Africa. It's possible. But we are here toying and they're chickening and behaving like headless chicken, as if we don't have. How can we be complaining in the midst of plenty? 
Because right. people get into government without understanding why they are there. They go there for their personal interest instead of for them to, be, to consider the larger good of the larger society. All right, Mr. Yedhok, um in those states, there seems to be like a political crisis brewing there uh, between Obasiki, Godwin Obasiki, the governor of Edo State, as well as PDP members, how he wants the escorts to be dissolved, how he wants, you know, his own man. You know, it's just a lot in Edo State. What do you think about the issues going on there? I think it's their problem and they will solve it. Nigeria has bigger problems. I'm sure you have another topic for us to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> There's also, I mean, maybe just to follow up on what you mentioned with regards um, yes. uh, farming and agriculture. There's a story on the Nigerian Tribune saying 12.8 million Nigerians um, may, uh, uh, or farming rather, threatens 12.8 million Nigerians uh, between June and August. And that's from the FAO. Uh, quickly react to that. Hey, like I, I, I will say it again. When there are people and there is no food, the, the, the inevitable concomitant is farming. How do you have food when farmers go to farm? When farmers do not go to farm, and every day we are sitting down and running commentaries on farmer header clash, farmer header clash, did we not have the capacity, like the sons of Issachar, to discern the signs of the times and know the, know the prognosis, what will come out of it, did we not see it coming? Is it an accident? Is it a coincidence? Is it such a breaking news? This is something that has been waiting for us. And if we have leadership that thinks of the people, if we have leadership that is proactive, if the, we have leadership that, that sees the future, then this leadership will know that the, the next best time for us to stop all this nonsense is today. If not so, food crisis is going to be worse in security than anything you can imagine. Farming is one of the greatest national insecurity indices in any country. And I hope our national security advisor understands the place of insecurity, understands the place of unemployment, understands the place of food security or, or, the, or the lack of it in the national security network strategy or architecture. And I wish that he would really tell Mr. President to sit let me use that word advisedly, to sit up and talk to us. That's one of the demands of, of the governors. And before governors will say, Mr. President, please address us. There is something critically wrong. And let us not get diverted by PDPs having problems with PDP, APC, with APC in Ondo State or in uh, Kwai Boom or in uh, Those are not the issues. We have current, they say house they born in the pursuit rat for Bush. We have major national issues that we must tackle. We must be able to talk to our youth and say, please, there are consequences of burning police stations and burning INEC offices. Who, who is engaging? Where are the leaders? Where are the elders coming up to engage our youth, to bring in their, their, their wisdom, to tell the young people that there's more in the future than what you can see in the now? Who is starting to tell the National Assembly and say, please give us electoral act as at like like yesterday so that we can start to prepare ourselves mr president i don't believe that a man who said that he could not sign a bill because it was too close to election time two years after has not thought it necessary for him to put his foot down and know that his biggest leg legacy is going to be that he gave us free fair critical election that's his only legacy in my opinion i may be wrong but i believe that and that is possible I wish I had access to Mr. President for just five minutes because I want him to exit in a blaze of glory. And if he gives us free, fair, credible elections, Nigerians are most forgiving people in the world. Look at our brother Jonathan. Nobody talks about him, just that he made one call. He is now a hero. And Mr. President can be a bigger hero by doing just one thing. Give us free, fair, credible. Forget about elections right now, or rather forget about you know all these economies, blah, blah, blah. And, let the elders step in, like the governors have. Let every well-meaning citizen come in with respect to this um, issue of insecurity. Let them not do a north-south issue. Because by so doing, you are disenfranchising our, our, our Fulani brethren. And when you disenfranchise people, you push them to people that will embrace them. Let us be their friends. Let us be their brothers at this time. Let us look at their concerns and address Nigeria Fulanese. Let us not alienate them, castigate them, 
Once a blanket cover, they use a brush and paint all of them. They are terrorists. They are. It's right. not true. They are not. Nigerian Fulanis are amazing guys. Let Mr. President draw that line and become the president of Nigeria, not the Obong of Fulanis worldwide. Okay. Ezekiel Lian Talk, thank you so much uh, for your time this very interesting Thursday morning. Thanks for uh, starting up our show for us. We wish you a great day ahead. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. Stay with us. Uh, we have a whole lot more coming your way this morning. Up next, we have uh, Today in History. What happened on this day, the 13th of May, many years ago. We'll get to share with you after this short break. <laughs>